Hello, we're at the uh, 2012 ESRI International User Conference. I'm with Dale Lutz here from Safe Software. Great to see you, Dale, again. Great to see you, Eric. Um, looking to see what uh, Safe Software's got new on the books this year. Well, we're in the middle of our release cycle. We always release every year in uh, January. But we have some really cool things that are, are in the oven that we're going to show a little later. We're all around the area of LiDAR, we've seen immense interest in LiDAR processing, preparing LiDAR for use in GIS here at the show, and we're really glad we put the effort in to build that subsystem now a few years ago. So is that the major trend you're seeing is LiDAR data, point that, clouds? That, that's one major trend. The other big trend for us here is supporting all these ArcGIS for, insert your word there, initiatives. So the big one there being ArcGIS for local government. We've done a lot of work with the team at Esri, and why, why, what, what value do we add in that situation? What we do is we make it easy for folks to take the data that they have in their organization and rearrange it to the data model that is needed for those ArcGIS 4 local government initiatives to work. Mm -hmm. And so that way they can keep doing business like they've always done, however they've stored their election boundaries and so on, and then we can make it easy for them to bang, put that into a geodatabase, and now all of a sudden, if it's community maps or election results or whatever the applications are, they can take advantage of that. Okay. And so that's the other big area that we've seen a lot of interest in. So you're talking about airborne LiDAR. How about 3D scanning? Do you see a big uptick there? Yes, we do, and it's very impressive what can be done inside of the ArcGIS environment with that sort of data as well. Mm -hmm. And actually, one of the big things that, that we have is the ability to take geocentric coordinates and turn them into orthometric, I guess, that's the mm -hmm. right term. Mm -hmm. um, so Again, a lot of units produce those in a weird coordinate system, being able to convert it so it's fit for use in GIS, very, very important to these people here. So it's interesting, when I first saw Safe Software, probably 10 years ago at an ESRI conference, I always walked by their booth and I said, what do these guys do? And I saw them year after year there, maybe in, uh, in a minute could you tell the audience what exactly Safe Software does, if that's possible. Right, we're in the business of moving data. So we take data, primarily spatial data, but it doesn't have to be, data from wherever it is, run it through some transformation and get it to wherever it needs to be. And the key value we add to the equation is that we make it very easy for users to customize that transformation so that mm -hmm. as it is moving from A through to B, it's exactly ready to go and ready to use. So to that end, we have a very powerful environment for quickly creating these transformations. Our, our primary competition would be folks writing code from scratch. Mm -hmm. And so that's, we're gonna beat that every time just because our environment is so productive in creating those shifts. I could have said something cheeky like, we do solidarity in the face of disaster, <laughs> or we help people that are feeling CAD-fused and disorganized, um, but all, we work with all these different data types and, and allow them to be integrated and moved so that people can get maximum value out of the data that they've got. And it's raster and vector, right? Raster, vector, LiDAR, web formats, database formats. Uh, people get excited about spreadsheets, for heaven's sake. Yes. Actually, I find it interesting at the conference, the biggest applause is this. Just let's just take a spreadsheet or a CSV file and put yes. pins on a map. And uh, of course, we can do that sort of stuff, too. And we're talking about data from AutoCAD, from uh, right. a DGN, micro, exactly. microstation file. Yeah, I was just um, talking to a customer formats, right? right now. ASCII with, format. Yeah, ASCII formats, legacy formats of all kinds. Hey, we even support some Wang formats, if people still remember what that was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, every kind of raster. I think the total number of formats in FME today is upwards of 290. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of data out there. We've thought that by now people would quit creating formats. Right. No, sir. Every year there's more and more ways of storing data, partly because more and more different new kinds of data even become invented. Okay. Fifteen years ago, we wouldn't have even known about LiDAR. It didn't even exist. Yes. And now there's dozens of LiDAR formats. What's interesting also is it seems to me sensors are becoming more and more yes. accurate. When it comes about GPS sensors, 3D scanning, other types of sensors. Yes. What does that do in terms of datum transformations and bringing disparate data sets together? What yes. challenges does that introduce? Well, the metadata is a key issue there. I, I like to tell the story of how this customer phoned me and was quite upset that he had a CAD file that didn't have the coordinates. He said, hey, you're not picking up the coordinate system. The, the person had never seen that before. And I took several times for me to tell him, hey, there isn't a coordinate system in there. And then he says, ooh, this is going to be a big problem. Yeah. And so um, this idea of metadata and knowing what the units of measure are, these geocentric coordinates, for example, mm -hmm. again, very they're useless unless I know that they're geocentric. Right. So the metadata around those things. The other thing that actually is happening about these sensors is that they are all, or they tend to be internet connected. Mm -hmm. And the number of internet connected sensors that are reporting measurements is ballooning. Mm -hmm. And so actually we've been doing some work on that front as well, because a lot of times those sensors have a spatial aspect to them. If they're reporting temperatures or lightning strikes or, or rainfalls, mm -hmm. those are interesting values, but they're more interesting when you know where they are and you can aggregate them spatially. So we really seeing a lot of interest and activity in that area too. 
All right, well, here we are in front of our FME product, and I'm just gonna ask Dimitri to go ahead and run this. And this is just showing a very simple example of some of the things we can do with our latest technology. He's entering in a flood level to simulate what would happen if we get water rising to that amount. And we've hit run, and then up it comes. And so it's read a LiDAR file, and now we've just, this is the original LiDAR file. You can spin it around a little bit. And now if he uh, flips to the results of our work there, you can see that we've colored an area in blue. We've kind of just altered the coloring. And that's just one example of the kinds of manipulations that we can do as we transform data from where it was to where we want it to be and doing some value added along the way.